This video is for MCDB 427 at the University of Michigan. Hello there. Today we'll be discussing non-radioactive tracers. I'll be walking you through the theoretical way to use non-radioactive tracers and why you should use them. Then we are going to work through an example of non-radioactive probes that's not found in your book. To start off with, what are radioactive tracers? They are polynucleotides that combine to complementary DNA or RNA. For examples, see the MCDB 427 videos on either S1 mapping or northern blots. Radioactive tracers are very useful, but there are some real dangers to using these types of tracers. First, the obvious danger is that they are radioactive. Probing for RNA or DNA is very important and is a crucial part of molecular biology. So if you're using radioactive methods constantly, it's only going to increase your chance of radioactive exposure. The second is cost. Paying for the safe removal of radioactive waste is increasingly expensive. These two reasons, safety and cost, are why you should use non-radioactive tracers. They work a bit differently, as we'll see, but they can be used in the same way as their radioactive counterparts, but without the downsides. The figure that we'll be going over can be found in Molecular Biology, 5th edition, by Weaver, labeled 511. This is what we start with, double-stranded DNA. Remember that there are two strands, both of which will become our probes, but for the sake of saving space, I'm going to use the one on the right. This strand is what we're going to make our probe with, which will bind to our desired object. In this case, and in our example, we'll be probing for DNA. First, you copy the DNA with DNA polymerase and all the usual deoxynucleotides, but you're going to use deoxyUTP and not deoxyTTP. The copied strand will still be DNA because we're using deoxyUTP, but this DUTP is even more special. It has an attached biotin, so we say that the DUTP is biotinylated. You can see to the right what the structure looks like. Next, we denature the probe from the complementary strand. We do this because we need the biotin-labeled strand to attach to the sequence we are probing for. Here, we see the desired DNA in red on the right. The probe is going to bind to the DNA only if there is complementarity between the DNA and the probe. It is also important to wash to remove extra probe to prevent nonspecific binding. Next, we add an alkaline phosphatase, but this one has an avidin fused to it. This is important because the avidin has a strong affinity for biotin. After allowing time for binding, we wash to remove extra avidin phosphatase. This makes it so that the phosphatase is located to only regions where the biotin is located, which is our probe, and with that, our target DNA. Next, we add phosphorylated chemiluminescent substrate, which will not illuminate until the phosphate is removed. That's why we added the phosphate on the avidin. Because the DNA is fixed in place, only regions that have phosphatase, avidin, biotin, probe DNA complex are going to illuminate. Then, you use X-ray film or phosphor imaging to detect the emissions. In addition, fluorescent counters could be used to quantify the data. Now we're going to switch to an example of non-radioactive tracers being used to screen a DNA library. Here we have E. coli colonies. Not all the colonies have the same insert. Different colonies of E. coli contain plasmids with different DNA inserts, and we want to find a specific DNA clone, and which has a particular insert region we'll call insert A. The cells are replica plated to a membrane paper and lysed with sodium hydroxide. This will break open the cells and denature the DNA. Then the membrane is baked to fix the DNA in place. Remember how we're going to detect. Next, we take our non-radioactive tracer, 
which is a 25 oglionucleotide complementary to the DNA insert A, and is biotinylated like the DNA probe from before. We wash and then we add our avidin phosphatase. Let's zoom in on our membrane to where our segment of interest is located. Now remember that the DNA was immobilized where the cells were located. The total DNA is shown in red and includes E. coli DNA and the inserted DNA. After you add the probe, it hybridized to only the regions of DNA that were complementary. Next, you washed the extra avidin phosphatase off. You added the chemiluminescent substrate, so therefore, whatever we see illumination means that the phosphatase was there, which means the probe was hybridized to the insert A. Now we know the location of colonies that have the correct insert we want to research. So we go back to the original plate and select the colonies that were positive. That was non-radioactive tracers and an example of their use. Thank you and make sure to check out our other videos for MCDB 427. Go Blue!